I will uh, introduce our next speaker. I believe it is Anaz, but I may be wrong. <laughs> He's a cybersecurity consultant specializing in industrial control systems for Saudi Aramco, a leading energy and oil company in the world um, based in Saudi Arabia. He has also co-founded uh, Ziffer Company in the United States, um, providing IT and OT uh, consulting services in banking, financial, manufacturing services industries, and uh, over the last 10 years um, has helped various organizations and companies around the world on uh, a variety of different cybersecurity projects. And today he will be talking about the ongoing battle that asset owners and operators face in defending their critical assets and um, just the effort required from uh, the defenders in this space. So thank you very much for joining us, sir. Hello, uh, thank you, uh, Tim. Appreciate that introduction. Th uh, thank you everyone for attending. Um, uh, my topic again is uh, the black gold uh, battle to defend the most treasured assets in the world. A uh, little bit about me. Uh, I'm that guy in the picture, uh, pretty much, uh, you know, uh, Run, uh, catching log fires and running after them in, in a fire scenario. Uh, and uh, pretty much uh, in Aramco, uh, I'm labeled that guy. So uh, uh, a little bit about me. I've been in IT since 2007, uh, working in OT since 2013, uh, defender of OT, um, have an attitude of getting things done. What I love uh, besides doing a work, as you can see on my uh, right hand side, uh, love time, uh, spending time with the family and the kiddos. Uh, you can see my son already coding away and uh, my daughter uh, taking my phone calls uh, and so on. Uh, in addition, uh, I love traveling the world. Um, uh, obviously COVID complications have kind of put a hamper on that. Uh, uh, have traveled close to 20 plus countries so far. Uh, you can get me uh, on the below email address if you need to reach out. A little bit about uh, my company. Uh, Aramco is uh, probably the largest oil and gas company in the world uh, by sheer volume as well as um, by uh, uh, revenue in itself uh, as we IPO'd as a company. Um, uh, what does my company cover? Uh, we cover everything that is what we consider as black gold. Uh, we have tank farms, the refineries, the oil pumps, we have facilities, we have the crude, we have oil platforms, pipelines, gasoline, some things that are not on this. Uh, we, we even have our own power systems. We have our cogen systems. We pretty much cover everything under the sun and we uh, uh, kind of uh, kind of responsible for the whole uh, crude uh, oil supply chains from natural gas to itself, the byproducts. Uh, so when we started this journey, we kind of uh, had our challenges, right? Um, being a very restricted environment, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, having access to these uh, close to 250 facilities, we had uh, no way to really observe or respond to inappropriate or malicious activity within these zones. We had inaccurate uh, policies in, uh, and procedures to get the you know, event data in question. We had zero remote access period, exclamation point, to, for team members so, uh, within these facilities and very, very restrictive access controls uh, to reach uh, to, to get to the data set in question. Sorry, it's a little bit slow, I think. So our journey kind of uh, started here, and this is kind of a summary of a journey, and then it kind of becomes a repeat cycle uh, in, in, the, in its essence. So, uh, you know, a fairy to uh, tale story, uh, internal alignments, global benchmarking, architectural considerations, use cases, and a roadhead and what we see in the future. Uh, basically, we started our journey uh, pretty much like uh, close to seven, eight, eight, roughly seven years ago. Um, 
challenge was put up by our immediate supervisors and uh, managers saying we need to start uh, getting data sets within these facilities to ensure that we have no malicious intent or activities within these uh, uh, OT devices. Uh, at times we were hit with roadblocks and it became a, like a picturesque uh, storybook uh, for us. Uh, we would tell our management, yeah, yeah, we'll get to it. Uh, we were working on it. We attempted to start the project. Um, we were able, we were successful in capturing, you know, key elements of those uh, uh, projects. Then we had multiple phases. And so it was like a never ending story. Uh, that journey almost took about, you know, roughly seven years to uh, uh, five to seven years to com uh, complete and still as a progress journey, right? And um, we first, you know, this management approach of dangling the carrot, right? We entice our uh, OT cybersecurity engineers and saying, hey, guys, uh, let's, let's get this OT cybersecurity going. Uh, and that kind of didn't work out. Then we had uh, chasing with the KPI stick, right? Uh, running after these guys and telling them, hey guys, we need to work on improving uh, that, uh, uh, you know, a KPI and ensure that, you know, we start doing cybersecurity monitoring for these facilities. Then obviously at the, um, uh, at the end, it became a collaborative session between OT engineers, management and IT engineers uh, SOC specialists uh, to come up with the best model for approach and how that uh, works, uh, you know, uh, how, how to proceed forward. So then global benchmarking happened and this is the time around the time we actually, when we started seven years ago, uh, we didn't have, uh, even if you look at SANS in itself, we didn't have courses around OT, uh, uh, you know, cybersecurity, we kind of were lurched in the dark. Um, we kind of went to, you know, the big companies, big oil and gas and energy companies and kind of gauged their benchmarking, what they're doing. Some people had uh, some creative solutions. Not everyone was doing what they were, um, uh, you know, especially in OT spaces. They were like, oh, we kind of do this. We monitor the perimeter. We do uh, some sort of uh, that technology. There was no real um, technology at that time from various IT, you know, uh, resources. Uh, pretty much all the IT-centric uh, cybersecurity tools uh, were very focused on IT Corp itself. Um, we also wanted to approach the technology using large organization concepts, so a zone and conduit concept. Where if I had, you know, 250 facilities, how to uh, I do scaling of that facility to a centralized one pane glass concept um, for my uh, ITOT uh, SOC analyst. Then we also have to look at uh, considerations and the IT world is totally different than an OT world and our kind of management uh, understanding of that and how to move that data set along. And then al also lastly to have that one pane of glass, right, a hybrid of uh, OT IT engineers and how to cross train IT guys with OT guys and ensure that baseline is there for um, SOC analysts. Uh, then we went to uh, our, uh, you know architectural considerations how to how to look at these you know few things we had some uh, you know, how to collect information, how to look at bandwidth utilizations within these small facilities, especially remote facilities that are oil platform facilities. Um, look at laws that are associated with, uh, you know, in itself the kingdom, as well as looking at laws, uh, you know, within GCC. Uh, doing assessments with these uh, sites each site uh, sampling of those. Um, we couldn't obviously visit 250 facilities, so we had to do assessments and, and rule out certain areas where we didn't have, uh, uh, you know, a mechanism to get that data set. Uh, plan, develop a plan um, also to uh, exercise on-site versus remote support and what level of on-site versus remote support we will do and develop a comprehensive process and procedure around it. 
Uh, and this is where we ran into an immediate challenge of uh, network layers, right? Uh, there's a way to kind of segment layers and capture the best way. And as you can see uh, from the Panda on the left, you kind of, you can do it clean way or you can do it the sloppy way of, uh, you know, layering that segment and how to best approach that segment. Uh, we, um, we didn't want to overkill the solution, uh, right? Uh, we wanted to go in, in different layers, uh, capturing you know, L2, L3, L4, uh, and moving it to L5, uh, if you follow the Purdue model, and, and kind of uh, having stages within our uh, solution uh, for cybersecurity, right? And understanding there's limited capabilities of monitoring, detecting, and of those in layer, you know, zero layer two. And then all, obviously we also had to look at this DT, introduction of DT, right? Digital transformation, or OTIT convergence technology, and how that kind of plays into the factor of the perimeter, uh, you know, monitoring of uh, the solution. So this is a kind of a typical ICS architect uh, that we kind of considered as a, uh, as a layer platform for us. Uh, you know, obviously we had to look at those red points, which you see on the diagram, where the attack problem is uh, and how we can monitor with traditionally, you know, what, what are the phases that we're gonna break in into? Oh, uh, can we monitor the control network? Can we monitor the PLC logic and so on uh, at stage one immediately? Or do we, uh, you know, uh, go after the low hanging fruits, uh, for example, USB infection or uh, looking at bad access rules or insecure wireless uh, infected uh, you know, laptops or computers? uh and what layer of where what layer do we see it at uh what and how do we correlate all those layers into one uh, one pane of glass again so um we decided to uh you know segment it off as, as we focused on cicada and dcs networks uh we you know also we you know looked at plant dmz's but not really focusing and leaving control networks to a, a later stage which we're currently uh piloting on, uh, uh, on various platforms. Uh, the corporate overview, this is how centric we want it to be uh, from a process, uh, technology and people point of view. Um, we wanted to see, uh, you know, uh, the perimeter for, you know, web servers, HMI servers, uh, our Pi servers, our capware stuff, uh, look at, uh, outbound inbound traffic for you know uh, firewalls look at network layer traffic and uh, uh, any internet communication or proxy communications and look at traditional intel uh, as well in addition we wanted to also uh, focus on um, how the people and business stakeholders in the process scheme works and how l1 will respond versus l2 versus engineers and then how incident handlers would uh, OT incident centric handlers, how they will handle with uh, application owners and system owners of various, uh, 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 you can say, ICS vendors, such as Honeywell's and Yogi Gala's. So we kind of looked at uh, the best approaches. We have a Saxon pipe, right, uh, which is a data set that sits in, in the facility itself. We use uh, third party aggregators to you know, size send that up. And then we had a centralized repository to kind of contain all of our infrastructure. Uh, this kind of applied to every single um, segment. And this is kind of the flow of the workflow that we have, okay? Uh, we had logs, we had aggregators uh, to collect those logs, normalize them, sort them into various pipelines from a cybersecurity angle, keep the pipeline for a local uh, safekeeping. So we have a, a local repository just in case uh, we need to reference that. Um, and then duplicate that repository into uh, out of the facility into a corporate facility using uh, you know very slow balancers as we have uh, huge data sets coming out of these uh, facilities. Obviously distribute and, and then do pipeline optimizations and then put it into these little categories. So uh, SIM, uh, log management category, and analytics. Um, and then have that single pane of glass for, uh, you know, uh, for, the, for the tier one SOC. 
and then have the capability uh, for forensics and then for the analytics is still in the phase of pilot, which is a roadmap discussion of for around coastal police. So during this process, immediately we realized that there's three different uh, use cases that we kind of immediately came, you know, uh, in bold letters to us and said, we need to focus on these. And this is where we, our assessments with various um, oil and gas uh, companies um, outside, as well as uh, third party consultants that uh, kind of deal with uh, OT security uh, 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 outside uh, for use case specialization. And then this is where we kind of mapped all our um, use cases. We looked at regional concepts versus global concepts, uh, how to correlate uh, uh, whatever we're receiving from, from, from the kingdom uh, uh, from Aramco facilities and how do we correlate that to the global wider uh, audience uh, within those com companies outside of Aramco that uh, are ICS OT environments and then going into the GCC collaborative uh, kind of uh, goal and then further moving on to into, uh, you know, threat intels outside of the, of the GCC in itself. And then obviously we wanted to ingest and ensure that base events are feeding to correlated events and ha we have contextual meaning around these alerts that we are firing off. So we have an understanding. And then map mapping this to kind of today, uh, MITRE framework before there was an older framework that, for the SIM platform that we use. Um, today we've kind of mapped about close to uh, a good percentage of our uh, use cases to a MITRE framework. And then developing this human intelligence uh, for our use cases. Uh, as, as everyone knows, the OT-centric use cases do not necessarily relate to IT-centric use cases. And understanding that that has to be a human intelligence component into it that allows that. So the compliance use case, um, in the past, uh, as you can see, uh, we didn't have uh, kind of a centralized uh, mechanism of collection. So in the past, before seven years ago, was, uh, you know, we, we kind of didn't know, uh, for example, event collect, event generation was even happening in these facilities, right? We had a process of manually going to, you know, 200 assets and looking at it, which uh, became a manual process. And it was just a spot check every year and a check, you know, checkbox exercise. So today we kind of worked on, on uh, you know, having that compliance tool set doing leverage of those logs ensure that they are compliant and everything is sending we looked at uh outliers and this is one of the biggest things that we found from our use cases that we have a lots of uh, we tag these guys uh, each of the 120 uh, uh 250 facilities we tag them as customers and we looked at outliers so we com compared crude uh, you know uh golf that are generating uh, and compared it with uh, other facilities that are GOPS, or power systems. We looked at uh, oil pipelines and compared each one, uh, one against another within our facilities and verified if we had outliers. And we did find some interesting stuff. And uh, this is where we uh, came up. Then it came to security. Uh, again, it was an ad hoc process of collection uh, before. There was uh, each baseline was individualized for each facility. There was no centralized effort. We kind of centralized all that uh, constant uh, uh, standard uh, communication uh, uh, between third case, uh, third cases, or use cases. We saw lots and lots and lots of new patterns that came about from our uh, exercise. And we immediately uh, decided to correlate all those data sets from various facilities to, to kind of come up with a baseline. Um, people were not, let's just say, once we started seeing these data sets, we noticed that people are not really particularly following the procedures within uh, the facilities. And then uh, this was very interesting. I kind of personally worked on this and uh, the availability use case, and we found. Uh, something that we did, were not really uh, kind of keen on uh, finding, but it was just amazing a uh, use case from our point of view. Uh, we started, uh, wanted to find out what's going on with some of the devices from a security point of view. And we found some that it was not really security relevant. We saw some devices had 
issues with um, uh, holistic, uh, you know, when we started looking at the holistic log set, for example, a, a router or a switch, and we start seeing that the health temperature and the disk and the memory associated with that data set was just amazingly, uh, we saw that during a peak time within, as, as you know, the, Saudi Arabia is a very hot country, within a peak time of uh, 12 noon, you saw temperatures of that device and uh, that device pointing out and saying uh, heating, uh, temperature overheating. And we, we decided that, you know, the logs were not sh being shipped because we had either temperatures being heating, disk utilization, memory utilization that was exceeding expectations. And that was just a, uh, something that we had to like tell these facilities, hey guys, you need to look at these facilities because some of the facilities, if you, especially in the desert, uh, it's just a one room closet and it doesn't have, uh, uh, you know, various components that they, uh, the team uh, from AC cooling point of view. So last kind of uh, to wrap up, uh, the road ahead is dotted with many tempting parking spaces. And this is where every time we found something, like for example, security use cases, we kind of were like uh, kind of, you know, very happy, you know, cheering ourselves, patting ourselves on the back and saying, we kind of did something good. Then we'll find something nice again. So we kept finding these things and it's very tempting to kind of uh, say, okay, uh, you know, great, done. But uh, uh, we kind of looked at, that it's a never ending journey, right? It's a repeated cycle. And this is where our road ahead is kind of looking at various uh, uh, things to improve on, right? So operational data monitoring is kind of done today as of uh, we are actually ingesting some operational data monitoring. We're looking at performance data monitoring that we want to explore and ingest as well for our baseline um, methodology. Uh, we're also, also working heavily with uh, the main uh, MIA, uh, Middle East and North Africa players for ICS vendors that are here and kind of pretty much daily engaged with meetings with uh, Honeywell's, Yogava, Simmons, uh, you know, Emerson, and kind of working on roadmap improvement from an ICS uh, cybersecurity point of view and uh, kind of nurturing that uh, atmosphere for them. We also dramatically improved our supply chain uh, and procurement uh, improvement from a cybersecurity OT centric point of view and we're just a huge also a huge uh, you know a journey as well to further keep improving and ingest and embed OT cybersecurity within these uh, platform uh, within this we're looking at those analytics technologies right the, the anomaly detection platforms and this is where we're uh, we're heavily working with uh, various we, we went through a various uh, you know, roughly, I think one year ago, we went through a, a massive uh, paper exercise. And uh, today we're actually doing a pilot with one of the vendors uh, and looking at those strategies and how to best augment that technology set. And then lastly, uh, obviously integrating Kepware and OSI saw or uh, Pi Optimate uh, and, and integrating those data sets from a, a, a holistic uh, operational point of view and checking if someone's modified various products. Thank you, everyone.